Hi, my name is Bruce Stewart. I'm a technical service manager with FMC, and I cover Kansas, Oklahoma, and the northern Texas panhandle from a technical service aspect. And I'm Greg Justice, a retail marketing manager for the body of Oklahoma and North Texas. Uh, Bruce, we've, uh, man, we've really had it this year with uh, army worm infestations and in just about everything from grass to, to grain sorghum to corn to soybeans. And as we have dealt with that over the last 30 days, and we're sitting here in a, in a field that they begin to prepare for wheat planting, I've been getting a lot of phone calls from growers, uh, consultants, uh, retail, retailers, and just the concern that we have for the fall armyworm as we begin to plant wheat and what we can do to try to best uh, optimize the ability to get that wheat established and get it up and going. Greg, you're right. I think this is going to be a pretty intense year for fall armyworm in wheat. And, uh, you know, just a little bit about the biology of this pest. It is kind of an indescript, kind of dingy black moth that comes out and lays its eggs on the foliage of the plants, uh, whether it be the wheat plant or weeds by it or other uh, plants close by. And then those eggs hatch into small larvae. And then those larvae will kind of scrape off the top layer of that wheat plant. And sometimes it looks like a window pane, as some people call it, where you can kind of see through it. It's uh, kind of transparent. So that's kind of one of the telltale signs if you're having fall army worm, the young larvae feeding on uh, wheat. Uh, then the larvae molt and get bigger. Uh, there may be four or five molts uh, that they shed their skin. And it's at that uh, stage, the last molts in their life cycle, when they're about an inch, an inch and a half long, is really when they do a lot of damage. I mean, the last four or five days of their uh, larval uh, life stage, that they can consume about 80% of the leaf tissue that they consume in their entire life. So that's a real important stage is when they become bigger, uh, usually these larvae live about two to four uh, weeks, kind of dependent upon temperature. If it's warmer, it's going to be uh, quicker, and if it gets cool, then it may be up to that month period that they live and feed. Um, just a little bit more about the fall army worm, you know, just identification, to make sure you have fall army worm, is uh, it has an upside down Y on its head, kind of a, a white in color, uh, upside down Y. And then kind of another characteristic that uh, you can use is that there's three thin little white lines that go from the head all the way uh, th through the body of that uh, larval uh, stage. And uh, those are kind of the two characteristics that you can tell if you have a uh, fall army worm in your wheat. Um, but, you know, again, very important and, you know, whether uh, growers get the level that they uh, need to, to spray or not. I guess that's, uh, there's different thresholds that are out there and uh, oftentimes uh, it depends, you know, the population that they have. Thanks Bruce for the information on the fall armyworm and what we need to look for as we begin this wheat planting season. I know in the past we've had to deal with fall armyworm as we've established our wheat crop here in, in this area for sure and we've used and had great success with Prevathon insect control as that wheat plant comes out of the ground. We've got some very long residual activity with the Prevathon insect control. This year we've transitioned to a new product called Vantacore insect mm -hmm. control, which is the same active ingredient which is in Prevathon insect control, but it's a higher concentration. And I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the residual activity that we can get with Vanticore insect control. Uh, maybe when the best time to try to spray it if we get those infestation levels where we need to try to control the fall armyworm. Uh, good question, uh, Greg. Yeah, I really don't want to put on Vanticore insect control until you kind of see that wheat is uh, starting to row where you can see some green foliage out there. So. Vanticore uh, needs to kind of get on the plant, uh, be absorbed into the plant, and it does have some root systemic activity as well, so it can be taken up by the plant. So really, Vanticore insect control uh, needs to be consumed uh, by the uh, fall armyworm larvae, so that's how it's going to work most effectively. There is some dermal activity to it as well, but we need some foliage there for it to, to be effective. Um, Usually we're looking at a rate range of 1.2 to 1.7 uh, fluid ounces of uh, Vanticore insect control uh, to provide effective 
control against this pest. Just a little bit about Vanticore. It is an anthralic diamide and uh, it, it affects our muscle system. So whenever these young larvae or bigger larvae take a bite of the uh, plant that's been treated with Vanticore, insect control, it's going to uh, affect it immediately. Even though you may still see them there and they look like they're alive, uh, their feeding behavior and everything's already being affected. Uh, Vanticore insect control needs to go out, uh, as I mentioned, probably about that 1.2 fluid ounce uh, per acre rate. And that's kind of equivalent to the, the 14 fluid ounce Prevathon rate. So very effective. It's going to provide that long residual it's going to provide uh, rain fast protection if you have a rain or if it's under irrigation. Uh, you know, these fall armyworms have overlapping uh, generations, so uh, you can continually having pressure on that wheat plant, even if you applied one day, uh, two or three weeks later, you can still have that pressure coming back, uh, trying to feed on, on that plant and, and cause uh, damage to it. You know, there is the option of, of pyrethroids. Uh, pyrethroids are another option. Uh, they're, uh, you know, readily available. Uh, they uh, are relatively inexpensive, but you really don't have the residual performance that you're going to get from Vanticore insect control. They're just not going to get into the leaf. Uh, they're not going to provide that residual protection that you're going to need from rainfall or from just that pressure of those moths laying eggs and those larvae continuing to try to feed on the plant. Yeah, Bruce, I know that a, a, a big thing, at least here in Oklahoma and North Texas, is trying to get this wheat plant out of the ground, get it up, get mm -hmm. it established, because oftentimes we will try to turn cattle out for grazing as that, mm. uh, as that wheat plant gets going. And so that's why I've seen in the past with Prevathon insect control, the longer residual really helping to get that wheat plant established, get it tillering, get it to the point where we can turn some cattle out hmm. and utilize that wheat crop. And I think that's where this Vanticore insect control is a real plus as we move uh, into this wheat planting season and to get our wheat established this year. I agree, Greg. I think this is gonna be an intense year for fall army worm. And uh, I think, you know, you've got some different control options out there, whether it be pyrethroids, short residual, or if you want to go with the Vanticore insect control, where you have this long residual protection, it's going to be taken in the leaf, it's going to be uh, taken up even by those young plants up into the root, providing kind of that complete protection for uh, you know, a, a long time until the freeze hits, until those farming, fall army worms are, are gone. Thanks, Bruce, for the information that you provided for us about Vanticore insect control and the fall army worm. It's going to be very helpful to, to us. And if you guys have any questions or concern, make sure you contact your local FMC rep and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions or concerns that you might have. One last thing I might remind you when you talked about uh, the coverage being important, mm -hmm. when you're going out aerially, it needs to be at a minimum of two gallons per acre and at least 10 or higher with ground rigs. And that will help get the kind of coverage that we need out there on the wheat plant to get the kind of control and the residual activity that we're looking for with Vanticore insect control.